episode of Makeup Therapy, okay? Art and chill, if you will. <laughs> this is where I do my makeup sprinkled with a little bit of a positive tag. <laughs> okay? So relax. Take a deep, thoughtful breath, okay? Grab your coloring book, your sketchbook, some snacks. Heck, grab yourself, <laughs> okay? Because you're about to go on a journey with me. <laughs> so the first thing I want to do is just cleanse my space. <laughs> this is something I always do off camera, but I don't know. I'm feeling extra chatty today. <laughs> So I just wanted to come and talk to you guys before we dived into the makeup. So to clean my space, I have some white sage and it is wrapped with eucalyptus leaves. <sighs> so I am just going to burn this and then I'm just going to kind of set my intentions and then just kind of talk to you guys while it's burning. So I really like this one for my workspace just because, you know, that white sage is going to remove, you know, all the energy from our space, negative and positive, so we can put back, you know, what we want <laughs> in our space, okay? And the eucalyptus, it helps to aid in visualization, okay? Helps to raise vibrations, okay? So, it's going to cleanse space. Okay, so we can just prepare for the art that we're going to be doing. <laughs> Through the power of makeup, I've already done one eye. <laughs> I actually have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> but that is okay. Because, you know, sometimes in life we don't exactly know where we're going. And that's okay. Because it's not about the destination. It's about enjoying the journey. And I plan to have a lot of fun figuring out what we're doing today. <laughs> and you should too, because if you're not having fun, then what's the point? Boop. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna jump right into my brows here. I got my Mayron Paint Palette. This is their basic palette. I'm gonna be using this palette for the whole entire look. So I'll just be using these colors and then custom mixing as necessary. <laughs> so I'm just using the blue for my eyebrow and then I'm gonna mix a little bit of the blue and white just for the very, very tip. <laughs> just a tip. <laughs> just going in with a tiny angled paintbrush. <laughs> Alright, so for today inspired by two things so obviously we were inspired by the peacock which fun fact did you know that it is the males that are called peacocks and women are called peahen and the species is actually called pea bow like mind blown <laughs> when I read that <laughs> I just never knew okay so don't say I never taught you anything <laughs> but I was inspired by the peacock just because today I really wanted to talk about, you know, spirituality. I wanted to talk about, you know, third eye. And I thought the peacock was a wonderful representation, especially because when the male, you know, expands its wings, they have all these beautiful eyes that show. So I'm really hoping that I can kind of capture that today. <laughs> but the main reason why I'm doing this, it actually came from a question that I got from Instagram. Someone actually asked me, you know, when was it that you became, you know, more spiritually aware? And I was like, wow, that was such an awesome question because I've actually never thought about it. You know, I actually had to take some time and really, you know, ponder about it. And upon pondering on it for a while, I was able to narrow it down to 
two instances <laughs> and these two instances were actually you know two major mental breakdowns that I actually had in my life now I've had multiple mental breakdowns <laughs> but these two specifically were different because during these times I ended up gaining you know some introspection you know because prior to those times you know I was just very emotional I was just not in control of my emotions so my ego was just running wild <laughs> okay I was on edge a lot I actually thought you know that I was literally crazy <laughs> I was always going through deja vu, I was always hearing these voices, you know, I always felt like something was just not quite right, but I could just never pinpoint it. And for a while, I thought that I was literally insane. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to take a flat brush, I'm going to dip into my Ace Beauty Vintage Dawn palette, and we're going to set the eyebrows, I'm going to use this dark blue, and then we're going to use this light shimmer for the very tips. Just a tip. <laughs> but yes guys, there were times where I just literally just could not even function. You know? But there were times where I just felt like I was just not myself and I could just never explain why you know it went from things as silly as you know cussing out children in a pet store <laughs> because they were getting on my nerve and you know it got as bad to you know almost being committed into a psychiatric war you know <laughs> I know that might really sound shocking, and I am going to go into detail in a second. <laughs> and, you know, I was actually very nervous about, you know, sharing these stories just because you just never knew how they may be received. But I decided to share this in hopes of, you know, it reaching and finding, you know, someone who needs to hear it or you know someone who has been through it or is currently going through it you know and I just really wanted to give my perspective because I think a lot of times you know we can romanticize what we think you know spiritual awareness or spiritual awakening may look like you know and I'm going to talk about that as we start our eyeshadow look. So for the top part of the eye, I'm going in with my Take Me to Ibiza eyeshadow palette. I am going to be first dipping into that orange. this light orange for the transition shade. And then we are going to darken the crease with that red here and this dark brown. And then for the brow bone, I'm going to go in with this very pretty kind of pale golden shimmer. Yes. <laughs> so. <laughs> Building up that orange in the crease. Okay. And I'm taking the remainder, just blending it towards my brow. And then I'm just winging that thing. And. <laughs> Okay, so I just really want to give my perspective and share some of my experiences because I feel like it's really easy to just get consumed by the idea of having this magical, you know, all-encompassing, you know, moment, you know. We become so consumed with the light that we end up, you know, chasing, you know, euphoria. We end up looking for things to, that we think will emulate that feeling. And it's because we are usually running, you know, from our darkness, <laughs> you know? And we need both. We need both that light and that dark. We need that duality, okay? Because if everything went 
smoothly, if everything went perfectly, if you were rich or you lived on an island by yourself or you had everything you wanted, what incentive would you have to grow? You wouldn't. There wouldn't need to be a point because you already have what you want, okay? So instead of, you know, romanticizing about having, you know, this spiritual awareness, you know, it needs to be more present in the things happening around us, okay? We have to stop, you know, trying to escape our pain, you know, our darkness, and you know, all those things are being brought to us they're being thrown at us so that you know we can grow and we can change we have to stop looking at these things as obstacles to hold us down we have to change our perspective these things are being thrown at us because we are expected to be able to heal through them okay to problem solve through them how do you expect to get what you want or get what you pray for or change the world or heal people you can't do any of those things for anyone else if you can't do it within yourself okay <laughs> so embrace that duality embrace that light embrace that darkness okay cuz I've experienced both okay I've had moments of when everything just felt right okay, I felt peace you know I was grounded you know things that I that had been stressing me for a while you know I was instantly able to come to the conclusion instantly given that awareness that, you know what these things don't really matter you know these things are not helping me to grow you know these things are only holding me back so it's time to let go <laughs> There's gonna be times where you're on top of the world, okay? You're gonna be the happiest you've ever been. You're gonna be manifesting all the things that you wanted, okay? There's also gonna be those times, you know, where you're feeling that gut just wrenching pain, okay? Where you're just beating yourself up for, you know, the person that you used to be, you know, things that you would allow, okay? The missed opportunities that you may have missed because of low self-esteem, okay? Low confidence, you know? These things will happen. But more importantly, especially during those dark times is when we have to push the hardest. And a reminder, this is not a race, okay? This is your personal journey. So now I'm prepping the eye for our glitter cut crease. But this is a reminder to stop comparing yourself to others, okay? Everybody's journey is different. Okay? Your time will come exactly when it's supposed to as long as you keep working on yourself. And remember to stop competing with others. Okay, When we're in competition with others, we will 100% always lose okay because the things that may have been given to that person okay they were meant for them they are not meant for us you know <laughs> you get what I'm saying so you will always lose comparing yourself to other people's accomplishments okay because we're all different we all learn differently okay some of us learn faster than others okay and also, don't stop being in competition with yourself. We have to stop being in competition with ourselves to the point that we can't appreciate all the things that we do because we're always trying to one-up ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Always be grateful for the things you've done and for the things that have yet to come. <laughs> so just remember, there are no races and there are no competitions, okay? If you're looking for something to look forward to, <laughs> look forward to being the best person that you can possibly be every day.
I just got done applying those green shimmers from the LA Pro eyeshadow palette. These right here. And just cleaning that space up so we can do our neon line here. <laughs> Which is just a mixture of the green and yellow paint from Mayron. After applying the paint, I do like to take a similar color eyeshadow and just pat it down just to make sure it's nice and set. It ain't going nowhere. <laughs> so now we are coming to my favorite part, which is the painting. <laughs> so the last thing I'm going to do before I talk about my journey and start the painting is I'm going to give one last reminder <laughs> as I use this green crayon in my waterline and I just want to remind you all well really it's a question I just want to just ask you you know why are you doing this you know why are you embarking on this spiritual journey you know is it to try to prove to family or friends or whoever that you're worthy because you're already worthy <laughs> okay you don't need to do that okay is it to prove you know that you're better than or you have like this knowledge okay this is ego don't do that <laughs> okay do this because you want to be a better version of you okay do this because you want to live and experience life in love, okay? And not in survival and anguish, okay? We want to stop getting by, okay? We want to start a thriving, okay? <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to finish applying this crayon like so. <laughs> so I am done for the face for now, mostly because I don't know what else I want to do to it. So I'm just going to jump into the painting portion. So I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video and the voiceover, okay? And I shall return my final thoughts. <laughs> Boop. So. <laughs> Now I'm going to tell you a tale of my first mental breakdown. <laughs> so, it started very gradually at first. You know, one year, it just kind of felt like I woke up and I was just over everything, you know? I didn't care about my job, I didn't care about school, I didn't care about the people that I was hanging around at the time, you know, I didn't care about, you know, my hobbies. I just felt so disconnected from just everybody and everything and I immediately knew something was wrong with me you know you know why am I not able to enjoy these things that I was able to to enjoy you know yesterday <laughs> and that feeling just kind of continued to just keep eating at me and eating at me until I had to do something you know so so naturally I started drinking more <laughs> yes this is one of these stories <laughs> so I just thought that you know maybe I just need to loosen up you know I'm just uptight you know maybe if I drink more you know maybe I'll be able to fall back in love with the stuff that I used to be in love with that was my first mistake <laughs> so sometime after that things start to get slowly worse so I find myself waking up, you know, having anxiety. I was having, you know, insomnia. And I just found myself in these depression bouts, you know, where I would just not talk to anyone literally for months. Okay, and, and then in turn, I would just find something to just hyper 
focus on you know whether it was school or whatever i would literally just find something and just hyper focus on it just so i didn't have time to be alone because i didn't want to be alone because being alone meant that i had to be alone with these thoughts and i did not want to be alone with these thoughts (laughs) so that went on for quite some time you know anytime i felt you know anxiety or depression taking over i would quickly you know go and just hyper focus on something until you know i felt felt that's the key word (laughs) i felt that those feelings had passed and this tug of war went on for quite some time you know i'm feeling okay then i'm not feeling okay i'm feeling okay then i'm not feeling okay until one day I really wasn't okay (laughs) and unfortunately the day happened to be on my birthday okay so now I told you you know kind of what led up to it so now I'm actually about to actually tell you what happened so the day started off pretty normal I was out with the person I was with at the time. We were having fun. We were drinking. Then I start to notice that I'm not really feeling too well. You know, I'm starting to feel that nervousness and that anxiety kind of creep up. And I'm like, "Uh, it'll be okay. You know, I'm just going to brush it off and just going to keep drinking like I always do. And everything will be fine. Except today, it was not fine. (laughs) It was not fine at all. I don't even know how to explain it. It was just like, I felt like I was just being hit. Like I just ran into a wall of my emotions, okay? I just started hysterically crying, okay? But I just had this feeling of just unwell worthiness i just felt like i was worthless that i'm not doing anything with my life i'm just wasting my life like i just came so overwhelmed that i just started to succumb to these thoughts okay and i just started freaking out hysterically crying so of course naturally it's time to go home (laughs) so i'm getting in a car with a person that i was with at the time okay and i'm still freaking out (laughs) in the car you know but then i start to calm down now it's at this point that i have no more actual recollection of what happened i was actually told (laughs) this is what happened so you know i just got quiet and then I just started talking about, you know what? I don't think that I can do this anymore. And it was at that moment that I actually proceeded to act on that by attempting to jump out of a car on the highway. <laughs> okay. So, obviously, this is not good. Okay. This is not good at all. This would be my rock bottom. Okay? So this is my rock bottom story. And I had no recollection of this. I was told the next morning. And if you could just just try to picture how you know mortified i was okay i was angry it was sad i just was embarrassed that i let myself get to this point because i knew you know something was wrong okay there i you know i knew there was some kind of chemical imbalance but you know i just thought that oh you know if i could ignore it you know it would go away and it didn't go away it just kept manifesting until you know that happened and what made it more traumatic 
is that the person I was with at the time actually tried to have me committed. <laughs> and um, he actually called into t- in, t- in institution and asked them to come and get me. So that just kind of just adds to it, you know. It's just, where do, where do I go from here, you know. I just remembered literally just crying just uncontrollably just for weeks because it's like where where does one go from here and i just remember telling myself you know i don't know what to do or how to fix this but i need to change this Okay, because this ain't it. <laughs> you know, this is not how I envisioned living my life. Okay, but I didn't know what to do. I didn't even know what steps to even take at this time, which made everything just hit so much harder. Because I just felt so helpless. Is my deep dark depression okay this is when i stopped taking care of myself okay this is when i stopped combing my hair okay this is when i you know my free i actually began my free form locks unintentionally because i just stopped caring about everything okay and this went on for a few months and then someone came into my life I would say randomly but nothing's ever random right everything happens for a reason the things we go the things we go through okay the people that are sent to us the people that we run across everything happens for a reason we just usually cannot identify it at that time because we're just so stuck in our minds that we don't have that perception and it's funny looking back at it now but back then you know this random person just came in my life and they gave me some crystals and I was like huh you know I've heard of crystals I've seen them before but I never actually venture to use them you know for meditations um grids and things like that but they gave me these crystals and I remember um the first one was amethyst and I just remember touching it and I was like oh oh this is nifty (laughs) so I took these crystals and I just instinctively I don't even know why I did this but I just instinctively closed my eyes and just relax you know i i had the I, I had these thoughts going through my mind but i didn't focus on any of them i just let them come and go okay and that was my first time accidentally meditating and i was like wow so that is what inspired me to continue on the path of you know the metaphysical realm i started getting more crystals i started (laughs) i started practicing mindfulness meditation i started meeting more people through that community and it was at that point i felt like okay i can do this (laughs) you know I can do this, you know, I, there is redemption, you know, I can grow, you know, like, it's not too late for me. When I realized that the universe is just so much bigger than me, (laughs) right, because a lot of times we are letting our ego just just take control okay that's why we are so reactive okay that's why we are so miserable because when our ego is in control that means that we are out of control 
So for the first time, I felt like I was present because I was in control of my emotions that I was actually able to sit down and kind of look at everything big picture okay instead of looking at oh what someone did to me or you know what happened in my childhood that caused this that and third I was able to look at myself for the first time okay I was able to accept the things that I've done and move on. So some of you may be thinking that that's the end of the story. Okay. This is when I gain that awareness. That I need to balance that light and dark. That I need both. Okay. And that I needed to heal in order to live the life that I wanted to live. And you would be kind of right there. <laughs> happened at this point is that I had been shown you know a new path you know I was shown that I can be happy you know it doesn't have to be forced okay I don't need the aid of substances but I can obtain happiness okay and I went for it I went for it you know I started meditating I started hanging around different people. Okay, I started reading. Now, <laughs> oh, how hard headed we are sometimes. So, <laughs> you know, after a while, I decided, you know, eh, I can be lax. You know, I don't really need to do these things as much anymore because I feel great. Okay, <laughs> some of you might be listening, like, uh oh. Uh oh, would be correct. <laughs> because the universe heard my overconfidence and said, Word, okay, let's test you. <laughs> and soon enough, okay, I remember, I actually never forget this day, I was meditating at night before I went to sleep. It's to clear my mind. And I remember hearing this weird noise kind of like this it's kind of like static right like um when you're listening to like a am radio and you hear that static and for the life of me i couldn't figure out what it was and the more i tried to focus on it you know the louder and louder the sound got and so i eventually just kind of had to snap out of it you know i had to wake up i had to stop meditating like ugh ugh (laughs) <laughs> you know I didn't know what it was so I just went to sleep and that very next morning boom all that anxiety and depression that I had over a year ago it was back but this all this time it was back with with a vengeance like it just came over me and I literally felt like I was choking because I was just remembering things that I didn't know I even remembered, you know, things that affected me in my childhood that I had no idea was even in my, you know, random things. Like, you know, when I was in uh, elementary school and a teacher told me that I was a, that I was a rotten apple and I would never be anything. <laughs> or, you know, just remember being disappointed when my parents said they would come and hang out with me and they wouldn't. Just like all these things things that I that you normally wouldn't think matter are now just hitting me full force and then I'm realizing oh yeah we are not quite over that are we <laughs> right but in that very moment you know I'm just getting hit with all this energy and my first instinct is to freak out just like the last time I'm like oh my gosh you know I am going crazy you know and all this stuff is happening and then I just stopped and everything just made sense everything just made sense you know I'm not crazy in fact I've never been crazy it was at this very moment that I realized this is my awakening you know, 
I had been pushing these feelings down for so many years that I wasn't even aware of them. But just because we are not aware of them doesn't mean that these things are not still flowing around in our subconscious. And that is what was happening to me. You know, things that are in my subconscious that I made myself forget about because it was too painful or that I just brushed off and never even attempted to heal from. All these things were just uppercutting me in the face okay it's because it was time to wake up okay these emotions are being presented so aggressively to me because it is trying to force me to deal with them okay because i have been putting them off for so long to the point where they're like hey we here now. We're paying rent. <laughs> and at this very moment, I had to decide what I'm going to do. Because if you're going to live, you have to live. Okay? Because living with anxiety and depression, it is not living. Trust me. So if you're going to live, you have to decide that you're actually going to live. That you are going to try, okay? You are going to heal. You are going to forgive yourself, okay? You are going to take actions to get you to the next step, okay? No more sitting around trying to occupy ourselves to do other things. No. The time is right now. But this is my story, guys. Okay. I've learned so much. And there is so much more to learn. <laughs> On this journey, I have healed different parts of myself. And I definitely have a greater appreciation for life. One of the things I did after having that realization is that I created Emerald Eden. <laughs> it's me! <laughs> this is one of the things that I created after having that realization. You know, that I want to walk in love, I want to spread love, and I want to receive love. Thus, this little blog or whatnot was created. <laughs> so I hope to continue growing and healing and hope to see you guys around. <laughs> hey guys, so it is about that time. We have reached the end of the video. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed the message. I hope you guys enjoyed the look. I actually love the way this came out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was really nervous. But it came out so beautiful. <laughs> okay. Before I go, I just want to reaffirm that you're not alone okay and you are not crazy <laughs> and everything will be just fine as long as you keep sight of what you want to do okay what type of life you want to live and it doesn't matter what happened in the past because moving forward you get to decide type of future that you won't. Ow. <laughs> so that is all for me. I love this peacock so much. I wish you guys could get kind of the full effect, but of course, this is YouTube. <laughs> but if you are interested in kind of lewd um, body
body painting. I am going to be starting a Patreon very, very soon where I can show my body painting in its entirety as well as I'll be painting models right now. I'm just gathering up materials and that energy. Okay? Yes! <laughs> Alright, so until next time. the way the eyes move. Okay, don't mind me. <laughs> Bye!